This is our Summer Camp Expo 2022. And so you guys should have gotten in the mail the Summer 2022 Camps. It's in the center of your, um, it's in the center of your summer camps or spring guide. You'll see something that looks like this. A little later on this week, you'll see a chart will be uploaded to our guide page on the web. Um, and that's at www.haywardrec.org backslash guides. The COVID-19 protocols. So above are the procedures that I'm gonna cover this evening are based on today's county and state guidelines. Should those change, we will go ahead and adjust some of these. So our daily procedures will have a temperature check and screening questions, hand washing or sanitizing, um, and only registered participants will be allowed into the facility. Um, we'll be sanitizing after program and masks are required indoors, however, not in the pool. Guidelines to return to the program. If your participant develops any symptoms or tests positive for COVID-19, please contact our district office immediately. If symptoms are not COVID related, doctor's notes are required and a child should be fever free for at least 24 hours. If a camper tests positive in order to return to the program, they would either need to quarantine for 10 days returning on day 11 and unvaccinated siblings will also need to quarantine as well. Thank you. It's talking smack about Trump. <laughs> okay, so now we're going on to aquatics. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that. So on our aquatic hey, camp, Nicole, we have... Okay, perfect. Go ahead, Tommy. Um, I'm not sure if you have video or not, but for some reason... Um, yeah, something got a little bit messed up, but uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, Aquatic Swim Tennis Camp. My name is Tom. I'm the program leader for the Aquatics program, um, and I'm going to talk to you first about uh, our swim tennis camp. It's from ages 8 to 11. <clears throat> um, it runs Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. It's at the Hayward Plunge. Um, in the mornings, we do tennis. Um, we do tennis lessons, try and get kids to uh, learn a little bit about tennis and have fun. Um, in the afternoon, from about 11.30 to 1.30, we do lunch and uh, camp activities. And from 1.30 to 2.15, we do learn to swim and drowning prevention. And from 2.15 to 3.30, we do free swim. Um, there are 10 one-week sessions starting June 6th through August 8th. And now we're gonna move on to our Junior Lifeguard Program. Junior Lifeguard Program, we're gonna switch the slides here. Um, junior Lifeguard Program, the ages are 11 to 15 years old. Uh, we run them Monday through Friday from nine to four. It's at our Castor Valley Swim Center in Castro Valley on Redwood Road and Mabel Avenue. Uh, there is a prerequisite for this class. Um, students are must be able to swim at least 50 yards of coordinated crawl stroke. The, there will be four two-week sessions beginning June 13th through August 5th. Um, it's fun, it fills up. Um, please sign up for it. If you have questions about if your child's ready for the course because of the prerequisites, you can give us a call and we will uh, set something up to, to see where they're at. Thank you, Tommy. Okay, so we have dance camps. They're for ages four to eight years old. They are in-person camps. We have Sing the Movie, Minion Mania Dance Camp, Trolls Dance Camp, and Welcome to the Jungle. There's two different weeks that each of those camps are offered. They're offered Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. There's a $15 camp kit required and payable on the first class. It will be taking place at Castro Valley Community Park, and the cost is $3.40 per week.
Deb. Hi, everybody. I'm Debbie, and I'm the recreation supervisor for the nature camps uh, and the art camps. We have two nature facilities. Our Sulphur Creek Nature Center is a, a local wildlife, um, and we also have a, a recreation hospital on site. Um, and uh, this summer, our um, camp will be learning more about the animals that we have on site, doing some arts and crafts and hikes uh, throughout the park. Um, <clears throat> the ages are from five to 11, depending on which session you sign up for. Uh, these are week long camps. Um, so uh, they run from nine to three on the dates in the chart. And you can see the ages as it correlates to the dates. Um, also, um, I, I'm sorry that, <coughs> also I wanted to let you all know that um, if the programs are full, please put yourselves on the wait list because we do check every Friday to call people for the next week. So I wanted to make that note for this camp in particular. Okay, we can go to the next slide, Nicole. Good. Thank you. So for our next camp, uh, this is at the Shoreline Interpretive Center. These are more um, focused on our bay animals and plants, the floral and fauna that are native to the bay area. Um, they will be going out on hikes, um, digging through the mud when the shore, I mean, the tides are low. Um, dip netting, arts and crafts, and then for our older uh, years old, we'll be doing some um, catch and release fishing. Um, the camps are um, two weeks long. Um, we have the bay shrimp starting in June, and then, um, uh, and that's for our little ones. It's only a couple hours long, nine, 10, 11. So, um, but it's every day. And so they develop friendships, but also get to explore uh, our beautiful bay. Um, and then the older kids from five to 11 years old, uh, we have the Bay Trails and Fishing Camp. And that's something new we started last summer where we have um, more of the hiking and the exploring of the bay the salt ponds and the mud flats. And then uh, the second week we do fishing. So it's a lot of fun. The kids have a great time and we're excited to have it again this summer. Thank you, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Summer art, art workshops. Yes, yeah, so this is Debbie again. I'm also overseeing the art programs. And this year we have young Rembrandts um, contractor with us for the summer. So we're excited to have them and they'll be focused on four to six years old. And then uh, they thought we'd try a five to eight year old class um, for those who want to um, uh, uh, try their drawing and their um, drawing skills. Um, we will be having them at Ashland Community Center. So we're really excited about that. The room is very spacious. It uh, has a lovely park and uh, the, uh, uh, what is it? The community um, policing staging is, station is there and our deputies love our kids. So we're excited to be there with them. Um, and um, all classes start at 11. Uh, they go from two to three hours. It depends on the um, session. So please check your guides. Um, and it's a, it's a great, um, wonderful introduction to the class. And of course it's young Rembrandt. So they do a great job and great projects. The one thing I wanna point out is in the guidebooks, uh, they have it listed as junior space workshop. It's actually um, junior at the farm. And so uh, we put in here formerly junior space workshop and it's also on uh, the website. 
uh, and when you're registering it, it's the same number, same description, it's just the title is different. So I wanted to point that out. Explorers Camp. Hello, can everyone hear me? I just wanted to, Nicole, can you hear me? I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, parents and families. My name is Adrienne DuPont and I'm the coordinator for the Youth and Teen Program, um, also known to some as Monarch. Uh, the, the Park Explorers Camp dovetails off of what some of you might be familiar with as Rec Innovation. Um, and we are using that same science-based philosophy and structure to dive a little bit deeper into some of our parks. This program is gonna be uh, taking place at our brand new Cherryland facility, the Castro Valley Community Center, the Southgate Community Center, and a San Felipe Community Center. Um, some of the activities include um, taking bug boxes out that have a little magnifying glass on the top and really looking at uh, enjoying the park in general, but also what, what are the plants that are there? What are the trees? We have some beautiful parks and we are going to take a deep dive into these parks. Um, and some of the same traditional things, arts and crafts, singing songs, uh, playing games. Um, so we're really excited about introducing this new program. Extended care is available uh, for this program uh, for participants. Okay, Nicole, next slide, please. Yeah. And we are really happy to have back our popular and traditional East Avenue Camp program um, that takes place at East Avenue Park and we're re reintroducing some of the things that we weren't able to do pre-COVID. So we'll be doing cookouts and hikes, overnights will be reinstated, re, um, field trips, uh, a lot of the, the great uh, fundamentals of this program that participants have enjoyed in the past. Um, and again, extended care will be available. And we'll have the Tenderfoot Camp Potawatomi, Camp Vida Nueva, um, the Park Explorer programs that I just mentioned are two weeks long. These programs will be one week long each session. Um, and that brings us to our um, next slide, Nicole. Sorry, for some That's okay. reason. We're, uh, where are we? I, I can That's start. it for you guys. <laughs> um, oh, there's no junior counselor. So we're, there is not. So we are on to right now special interest classes. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Recreation Coordinator Jen Tibbetts, and I oversee special interest programs and camps for the Hayward Area Recreation and Park District. Um, special interest summer camps are offered through a partnership with a variety of independent contractors who have specialized skills in different program areas. This summer, I'm thrilled to be offering numerous camps to engage your children through fun and interactive experiences where they can learn new skills and meet new friends. Um, as you see on this slide, we're offering um, cooking and foreign language camps. The cooking camps are geared towards ages 6 through 12, and we're partnering up with Cooking Around the World to offer themed camps, including Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and Star Wars. We also are offering, offering cooking fiesta summer camp, and this will explore Mexican cuisine and history. Foreign language camps are geared towards ages six to 14, and we're gonna be offering Mandarin classes for children, as well as summer fun Spanish camp. Next slide, please. Oh, it appears to be junior counselor. So Adrian, here's your next slide. Okay, let's see. So, so the junior counselor program is um, really uh, designed to provide, it's a leadership and job training program. So it's designed to provide interview skills for our local youth, um, help them learn about public speaking, 
leadership and safety. Uh, and this year we have a process where they can come, they register, that's step one, as you see on the slide. Those interviews are gonna take place on Saturday, April 2nd. And then if they are selected, they'll receive registration information to enroll in the program. Um, and then we will have a process of signing up for those volunteer weeks. Um, and we are asking that each participant uh, volunteer for at least two weeks of camp once they've completed the, the leadership program, um, which we anticipate to be um, around the first week of June. Uh, so I think if you, uh, I think this this will be open, this registration I believe will be open with all of the summer camp registrations um, next week. So that would be the first step if your children are interested in being a junior counselor this summer, that would be for several of our district programs. And there's no guarantee of which program they'd be assigned to, um, but they can express a preference during the interview process. Uh, but I encourage everybody to sign up for that. And to also, if possible, I am a mother of a 15 year old, but to allow the, the participants, the junior counselors to try and make most of, most of the communications and um, most of the participation uh, have them be involved as much as possible. So thank you very much, Nicole. Thank you. And just as a reminder, if you guys could enter your questions into the Q&A, that'll help us as we answer questions towards the end. So thank you. All right, Jen. Okay, so special interest programs. We are also offering a variety of coding, science and technology camps for ages five to 17 years. And we've partnered up with some really great independent contractors to offer these classes. Code Ninjas is going to be offering 3D printing, Python, Scratch Junior, Minecraft, Roblox. Code for Fun is going to be offering in-person as well as some virtual summer camps. So if that meets your needs better, do check out those camps. Um, they're going to include coding with robots, web design, and mobile app development. Mad Science is going to explore robots, experiments, widgets, NASA, engineering, and animals. Playwell Technologies is going to offer fundamental STEM concepts through play and create a creativity through Legos. We're also going to be offering Steamworks for Kids, where your children will design, build, program, and play through hands-on interactive fun. And finally, young engineers will create models and see the practical application of mechanics and physics. Next Thank slide. You. All right, sports camps, Noel. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Uh, Noel Muniv is recreation supervisor. Uh, one of my uh, programs is youth sports. Uh, so I wanted to just give a quick overview on those sports camps for this upcoming summer. Um, we are working with, you know, our traditional uh, contractors that we have in the past. So make me a pro sports soccer camps, uh, ages five through 12, <clears throat> excuse me, National Academy of Athletics, ages seven through 12. Um, and I should point out the all sorts of sports camp is a multi-sport camp. Um, Hoop it up camp is, is a traditional basketball camp. And in the net, as you can see, is soccer. Locations of, of those uh, camps are li listed there. Um, did want to also point out that these camps are kind of your traditional skill building camps uh, for all skill levels. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we're also working with Skyhawks. Um, you can see basketball uh, offering at MJCC, soccer. That, that acronym is the Sports Park, the Alden E. Oliver Sports Park, um, and volleyball, that acronym, Matt Jimenez Community Center. Um, the reason why I highlighted the uh, basketball and volleyball camps um, it's a unique opportunity to go to a full day camp because there's a 9 a.m. offering of basketball and at the same location, a 1 to 4 p.m. volleyball offering. Uh, additionally, uh, we are working a, a newer vendor of ours, but very successful tennis, in, tennis instruction. Uh, and as you can see, a 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. camps. Uh, those are weekly camps. The cost associated is there as well. Um, and as you can see on some of these pricing, there is a four day price there and, and that's going to be for that July 4th week uh, where one day will be a holiday. Uh, next slide please. And then rounding out the, the sports camp offerings uh, at the Mission Hills golf course and driving range will be offering and, and working with Silicon, Silicon Valley Golf um, to offer half day and full day camps. Uh, the half day camps 
offer three hours of instruction at the driving range. So that would be going over the basics of chipping, putting, uh, golf etiquette, et cetera. If they were a part of the full day uh, camp, it would be that three hours of instruction in the morning. And then the second half of the day, the next three hours would be on course at the Mission Hills Golf Course, you know, learning uh, what you encounter during, you know, uh, while you play a round of golf. And again, you can see the reduced cost for that four day offering. And then lastly, we have uh, Darcy O'Leary Jiu Jitsu. It's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, dojo. You could see it's uh, where its location is on Foothill Boulevard, uh, four to eight year olds. Those are weekly camps uh, starting the week of June 13th um, and ending August 12th. Thank and Nicole, you, no. Nicole, can I just point out that we also have scholarships. Um, if anybody's interested in that, you can get that information on our website. Um, additionally, um, an access for all program uh, for special needs, if there is accommodations needed, um, that can also be accessed online as well. Thanks, Nicole. You're welcome. So we are going to attempt to, um, again, if you um, put anything, if you can do me a favor and make sure you put your questions in the questions and answers, we're going to go through and go ahead and answer some of those questions um, for you um, as we go through these. So um, in, re in regards to registration, registration is next Wednesday. It is at 8.30 a.m. It will be at Hayward Rec. If you go to the haywardrec.org um, site and you click on the register at top, you would do that. If for some reason you've forgotten your password, it's kind of like Amazon would be. You're going to go ahead and click forgot password. And then from there, it's going to send you an email. And then you'll use that email to go ahead and open your account. Um, so, um, and if you have questions, again, make sure you're typing them into the question and answer. So, um, Vicente, um, do you have, the question is, will there be weekly themes for the park and East Avenue camps, and when are those themes shared? Uh, the answer is yes, there will be weekly themes for the Park Explorers and East Ave camps. Um, those will be posted um, on our website um, towards mid-April and will also be distributed for every registered participant uh, a minimum of week in advance. And then Adrian, could you please share just a couple sample themes um, that we have uh, in mind that are being developed at the time? So East Avenue Camp, uh, um, traditional things have been, they, they come up with a theme for the entire camp. Um, and some, sometimes it's superheroes or, um, you know, mythical week, uh, carnival week, different type topics like that. In the Park Explorers program, they will be a little bit more park and nature based like um, bugs, plants, you know, saplings, if it's the redwood group, uh, you know, pine cones, maybe adaptations, uh, themes around those topics. Thank you guys. Um, in regards to finding out about um, adjustments for camp um, at the pool, it's my recommendation that you contact the pool and talk with Tommy and he can see if um, that class would be a good fit for your child, Kristen. Okay. Um, go to the next one. Okay. All right. So the question is, the weekly times were changed to 8.30 on a weekday. Um, the registration was time was changed to make it so that people could come in and get assistance too at the same time to make it fair across the board. But thank you so much, Kelsey, for sharing your um, frustration and I will pass that on to staff. Okay, so we gave some themes. Vicente and Adrian did a great job of doing that. Um, so are there any camps at the Kenneth Aiken Senior and Community Center? Jen, you have some camps there? 
Um, so I recently just moved some of the code for fun camps to Kenneth Aiken. Um, it's not going to be in the guide, so you'll have to look live on active um, for the most current locations. Um, but we're not doing as many camps up there because we have had our seniors return to programming and they are utilizing most of the building at this time. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, so this next question is, um, will we share this recording? Yes, we will share this um, on our website. Um, did I miss any information about swimming lessons? So swimming lessons for, for spring are in the spring guide. Swimming lessons for summer come out in our summer guide. So this only has, this guide pertains specifically to camp. Um, so what are the hours for jujitsu? Noel, do you have an answer for that? Um, so somebody said, um, I saw something about volleyball camp, but it wasn't in the catalog. Noel, can you help with that? Yeah, let me answer a few. I'm trying to answer in the in the chat as we go so everybody could see it. Um, There's a few that I saw, so I'll answer the ones that I, I remember. The jujitsu is a 9 a.m. Uh, to 12 p.m. camp. Um, the uh, Someone had a question about volleyball. So that was a late addition by Skyhawks, um, but that will be online. It's not in the summer camp brochure, but it's in the same area that you would find all the other Skyhawks and sports camps. And then someone had a question about the volleyball camp that can be, uh, th that's a, you know, a, a, a la carte. So that can be a, a self-standing registration. So if you only want your child going to the volleyball and not both of them, uh, because there's a basketball offering in the morning, um, you could do one, the other, or both. Thank you so much, Noel. And, and then one last one, I see some questions about minimum or maximums. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them uh, are, are up to the independent contractor. So some of them uh, could range from anywhere from 14 to 20. On the registration site, you can see the number of uh, open spots, I believe. And Nicole, you can correct me if that's wrong. Um, but if you need uh, further information, I'm going to put my email in the chat and I can you know, provide that to you um, when I'm in my office and maybe have a, a few more information at my fingertips. I apologize. So no, you are correct. So if you can see these classes, they are live. So if you go on, um, and you go to our, the registration website. And this is great because you can go on, you can log in to make sure all your stuff works, that the kids are in, that they have the right age groups. Then once you're there, you can look at the classes. You can't register for them, but they will show you the minimum and maximum in each of those classes. Um, so are any fishing camps going to be offered? Debbie. Yeah, so those are part of the, it's a two week camp. Uh, they're at the shoreline, uh, Hayward area shoreline, I'm sorry, Hayward area, <laughs> Hayward shoreline interpretive center. I'm so sorry, it is late at night, uh, but it's the Bay Trails and Fishing Camp. Uh, they're two weeks long and we are offering uh, three sessions. So three two week sessions. Um, and the first one begins July 5th. Um, and so you can sign up for that. Thank you, Debbie. Um, so the group sizes, as Noel was explaining, they will vary per, by camp by camp, but they are available live online. So you can go ahead and take a look if you know specifically what camps you're interested in, and then it'll tell you how many people are there. Um, so the question, is there a daily schedule for Parks Explorers, the, the littler group? Vicente or Adrian? Yeah, hi, Nicole. Um, I sort of answered that in the, in the chat here, but I will share that we've, we are, uh, have developed a program, whether it be daily journaling, um, we're going to be doing some mask making over the whole week. 
um, and not to get too much in the weeds, but we're going to ask the children to draw a map of the park on the first day and a map of the park on the last day and find out what we've learned about the parks that we all contribute to and are connected to. Awesome. So again, parents, if you could help us out tonight by putting your questions in the question and answer, we can go through them and answer them. Um, so for the fishing camp at Shoreline, they, um, Debbie's go ahead and typing that answer. So I'll skip that one. So, um, so for your daughter who tuned, uh, I'm gonna skip that one. Okay. Um, so the question is, um, thank you so much for asking about the, um, you know, additional camps for 12 years old. We will take that and pass that on to staff as um, we work with a lot of contract instructors. And so they give us the age range that they want to offer for their camp. Um, but I will make sure that we pass that on to staff. So staff knows that people are looking for additional camps for the older age group. Um, so Ben, to answer your question, if you go to haywardrec.org, and I'll actually type it in too for you, haywardrec.org backslash register, that will give you all of the information. And that's also the same place you're going to register. Um, and it will have the, um, it will have all the last, the class listings and that stuff there. Um, so, Thank you so much, Jessica, also for that, that question. I will make sure that we pass on again the request for additional camps for older. Um, so is there a sibling priority? I'm concerned about splitting my six and eight year old. Can you give me a little bit more information on what program you're looking for? Um, so I can add some more clarification there. Um, so, all right, so um, I'll just go ahead and send a message to this parent. Um, do they actually catch real fish during the fishing camp? Is it a catch and release, Debbie? Yes, it is a catch and release. So yes, live fish, real fish, sometimes stingrays or bat rays. I'm sorry, not stingrays. Okay. Um, so um, to answer the question, some camps cut off at five years old. So we have a variety of different camps. Um, and so you would just need to look for a camp that would fit in your week and with the age group. Okay, so Debbie, in the guide, the fishing camp estuary explorers for the older children says nine to 12, but online it says nine to 11. What is the correct age range? Uh, I believe it's nine to 12. Okay. So Melissa, to answer your question, um, the digital guide is the same guide that you got in the mail. If you wanted to, the, in, the contract instructors that have contacted us and wanted to add additional camps after we were done um, with the guide, you could go ahead and go to the haywardrec.org backslash register, and then you could see the latest information on there. Um, Noel, somebody has a specific jujitsu question. Do you mind typing in an answer on the question and answer? I messed up and pressed something. I can answer yeah. it. You know, the camps, uh, my email's in, in the chat. Maybe email me, uh, ma'am or sir, on the side. Um, but the camps in our system is four to, I, I, let me look at my notes, I'm sorry. Uh, it is four to eight is what we have. So, so email me on the side and we can take care of that. There's definitely an offering there for, for that age group, five, six, seven. There is something there. Okay, thank you so much, Noel. 
Um, to answer the question, your child for swim tennis camp, they are going to divide them into groups and do swim lessons. So based on their skill level, um, they'll adjust them accordingly, but then they would need to, they would be in recreational swim um, for a portion of the day too. Um, but they would be learning, they would get swimming lessons in the afternoon. Um, and then the price is shown for each duration of the camps. So some camps go five days, some camps go longer, some camps go different amounts. We do have two holidays this summer, July 4th and June 20th. So, um, um, Jamie, thank you. Um, right now, currently summer or spring camp and summer camp registration um, have always been on the same day. So um, they will also be on the same day now. All that information has been sent out. But thank you so much for your comment. I will turn that back into staff and share your concerns. Okay, so I just wanna make sure. So again, registration is February 16th, which is next Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. And then let's just make sure. So if you've reset your password and you did not receive it, please check your junk mail. A lot of times that's where it goes. Um, so again, a question regarding swimming. The, the kids will not be wearing life vests, but they will be doing swim lessons. Um, so the level of Spanish, Jen, can you take that? What is the level of Spanish in this class, beginning, intermediate, or advanced? So the Spanish class will be for beginners and they'll do conversational phrases. Um, they'll mix in some history with that, um, as well as the Mandarin class. Um, it's a beginner level class um, for entry level students. Thank you. Um, the summer camp booklets have been mailed out. Um, so if you have not received them, if you could send us an email um, and let us know, um, I can have staff follow up on that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the email information in there. If you're looking for a, um, or requesting to see if it's possible for us to do a modification on age or something like that, please shoot us an email at info and we will pass that on to the supervisor. It doesn't mean that we can grant all requests, but we will make sure we pass that on. Um, uh, so to answer the dance camp, so dance camps specifically are outside in the park. And um, I don't know, somebody's given me their email address. Did you need, if you could give us a little bit more information if you're sharing your, your address. Um, just kind of scrolling up to make sure I've answered all the questions. So um, in regards to camp, if for some reason camp is not um, in the guide, um, or in the guide, it'll tell you whether it's virtual or um, in person. We do have a couple of camps that are virtual. So. Nicole, I see someone in the a question in the chat that I'll, I'll uh, answer. The, we have an access for all program. Uh, this is for Ms. Velasquez. Um, you can access that application online. Um, so th there's an interview process. We go through you know, a, a discussion about whether an accommodation would be necessary. So to answer your question, that could be a possibility. So I, I would suggest filling out that paperwork and getting that in um, prior to registration. Okay, are piano classes being offered? Not, uh, we do not have a piano camp being offered at this time. Um, thank you for sharing. It would be great to have art camps for 11 year olds and, and older. And then do you offer refunds if kids need to be quarantined due to COVID? Lori, do you wanna take that? So, uh, at this time, we are 
Um, taking those case by case, we have a request for refund form on our website. We do want you to contact us at info at haywardrec.org immediately or as soon as possible if there's an exposure and or if there's a positive um, uh, test result. And you can also reach us at the uh, main number, which is 510-881-6700. And there's a request for refund form you can complete uh, on the website under programs that you can turn into info at haywardrec.org as well to request a refund for the dates that your child will not be in the program. Um, so thank you so much, Lori. Okay, the next question, is there a chance the maximum number of kids in Sulphur Creek's camp will increase if COVID's numbers continue to decline? Actually, this is based off of the space we have uh, for uh, the space and the staff that we are able to hire for the summer. Um, so we will most likely, it's I, I don't want to say yes off the bat because yes, if there is, but we, we need to make sure uh, that everybody is safe as we move forward and we'll be following the county and uh, the county guidelines on that. Okay, so the question brought up, this is for you, Jen. It says for, for um, some STEM classes are in the camps in the morning and some are in the afternoon at the same location. Can the kids have lunch packed and have lunch in between for the afternoon class? So those are the independent contractor camps and they build in a staff break. So the staff will be on lunch during that time. So there will no be will not be any supervision. So um, I don't recommend that. Nicole, one last thing. I've, I've included the Access for All application that I discussed um, in the chat. So you can, uh, there's the link directly to that application. Perfect. Oops, I'm gonna put other, our information up here too for everybody because they were looking for the general information. Um, uh, so for, to answer your question in regards to the swim tennis camp, Erica, um, so they, they will get swimming lessons and staff is in there conducting the swimming lessons with them, but then they will have free play um, during some free play time during recreational swim um, that they can play in the water and the staff is still there and the guards are in the lifeguarding chair. Um, um, and then, so, is the overnight camp out optional, Vicente? Uh, yes, the overnight camp is optional. Uh, so we do have op optional pickups uh, and it could be arranged with staff at that location. Um, and so if there, if there is some hesitancy in the overnight or the child feels uncomfortable, um, we will go ahead and you can direct your questions to the staff there and we can make accommodations. So, um, Erica, it seems you have a lot of questions. I'm actually going to have you give Tommy a call um, or shoot him an email. I'm going to put his email in here. Um, and he can ask, or he can answer more of those questions for you. Okay. Okay, so KP in the catalog. So, in the summer camp guide, it will have locations for um, parks that are abbreviated because spacing is limited. So if you go to the spring guide in the back, there is a facility directory. And in that facility directory, it will have the locations. But KP is, yes, is Kennedy Park. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and 
take a look at time. We have a few more minutes. Um, Erica, to answer your question, Tommy is, um, is the um, coordinator of the aquatics program. Yes, at this point, Kennedy Park is still closed. We anticipate it being open sometimes this spring. Um, at this point, yes, our staff is CPR and first aid certified and the staff um, will be available for the first day of programming. Um, so if you want more specific information, please go ahead and email the, um, uh, go ahead and email the program area that's specific and that can be found in the back of your recreation guide. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? So again, just to do a little bit, and I'm actually going to type it in that, you know, registration um, is next Wednesday um, at 8.30 a.m. at, I'm just going to type this in for you. I would highly encourage um, you to go ahead and log in and make sure everything works, make sure your kids are the right ages and everything so you can get into the programs that you really want to. Um, and then that way, if you have any problems or it's not working and you need some assistance, um, our customer service line, the 881-6700 number, will be happy to help you with that. So at this time, it doesn't appear that we have any more questions. Um, so I will, first of all, thank you all so much for coming, coming and um, learning all about our summer camp programs. Um, we will be taking all of the names and one lucky winner will win the gift certificate to camp. We'll be drawing the winner from the current attending, those that currently attended and emailing you guys tomorrow. So if you have any additional questions, um, please let us know. Um, staff can hang out for the next little bit and we'll answer any questions. If not, thank you so much for your time and coming and we hope you have um, a wonderful week. And to answer the questions, we had 90 something attendees. Thank you all so much for coming.